What is flanking transmission? This is a very important concept that you need to know about when you're working with architecture, structural engineering and acoustics. Because when you have two rooms like this, let's see if I can do a little simple sketch. Like so. And then we have a, the wall here. So it's room one and room two here. Now, if you just consider the separating wall, this is the most important one. And you can select a wall that has a certain dB rating on how many decibels you got of sound reduction you got in this one. So let's say it's an the wall has an RW value of 44 dB. But when you are considering two rooms in the field, this is not enough. Because in the, in the real world, you will also have sound transmission that's coming through the... It's gonna go... Some of the sound is gonna go through the floor structure. It's gonna go in here and excite the floor in the next room and be radiated out there. You're gonna get some sound that goes into the ceiling. It comes out in the other ceiling here. Some of it will go into the outer wall. Let's say that this is the facade. So this wall will be excited by sound inside this room. The vibrations will continue out here and then it will be radiated out here. And all of these transmission paths will go in both directions. So if you can hear your neighbor, your neighbor can hear you. And of course, this little wall here as well will also have another RW value. So, so you see there are many different transmission paths here. These are the primary ones that I've drawn. You've got the direct separation the separating construction wall, you got the ceiling, you got the floor, and you got two adjoining walls like this. And these, these five would be like the primary, primary ones. But you will also, when you, this gets more complicated, even though, let's see if we draw it like a section perhaps. So if we have from the side like this, so we've got room one and room two and this is a direct transmission, but you will also get this behavior. You excite this wall and then it goes up here and it's transmitted into the, to the ceiling and then it's radiated from this path. And some of the sound will go into, the, into a floor structure and excite the wall and be radiated this way. And, and then you keep adding all these, so it's like it's three dimensional problem. So it becomes quite complex this. So when you are checking out the manufacturer's homepage on which walls you should use and which ceiling solutions and such, you always need to have this in the back of your head that you have to have some safety margin because the more transmission paths you add, the lower the total sound reduction will be. I mean, it's, uh, it would be similar to an electronical, electronic circuit that if you have like a battery here, it goes down to ground and uh, and you have several transmission paths here with R1, R2, R3 and so on and I mean the more resistors you add here <laughs> the more current is gonna get through so it's, it's, a, it's a similar story with with acoustics and this is just the structure and the walls and the, and the ceiling and the, the floor you also got ventilation ducts. So there's gonna be some kind of ventilation going between these rooms. Maybe if it's a duct that comes from here and then you have an outlet in the ceiling and here. Oh, that was a bad sketch. <laughs> Sorry about that. And you will get sound transmission through this one. You might even have some radiators to keep you warm. And these ones might be water, uh, li liquid, <laughs> not electrical radiators. I'm not sure about the English terms, but they're connected with, with like radiator pipes. And then you will get the behavior that this one is excited in this room and you can have vibrations transmitted and they are radiated out into the next room. And it goes on and goes on. So that's pretty, quite a lot of uh, transmission paths in a real building that, and they all add up. So don't forget about them. Planking transmission, very important concept to remember. 
However, this this one that goes through the duct would I, I would I would actually not call that I would call that crosstalk and not flanking transmission. So actually that one was a bit out of context here. I personally consider flanking transmission to be mission. That's sound that is travels through a, a, a structure before it's it's radiated out once again. Whereas when you have sound that is traveling through a duct, like the ventilation, that's more like crosstalk. So then it's airborne all the way. However, in a case like, like this, this is not airborne sound because it's traveling through a structure before it becomes airborne once again. So that, that's the topic of flanking transmission done in five minutes. And in today's video, I'm wearing a full suit, two-piece suit, like this is a three-piece, but I just decided to go a bit more casual with a two-piece. And it's a really nice combination, I think. I got this blue shirt, which goes great with this one. Pick it up in the tie with some blue, green and blue and brownish, whatever this color is called. It looks nice. And uh, I pair it with a bit of beige, brown and a splash of orange here. I pick up the beige in my socks which also connects really nicely to the suit. And then I have dark brown leather on the belt, the watch, silver medal, silver tie clip, and I even got a monkey fists in, in silver, this ones. And uh, yeah, also silver here on, on the belt. And when you grab a pair of shoes, also make sure that these little holes where you put the, the shoelaces through, they need to have silver around them so it all creates a great harmony thank you very much see you later